Good evening, everyone. All right, time for another movie collection update. This was also requested, so I'm more than happy to oblige. Um, we're going to start with a DVD, actually. Um, I haven't been buying very many DVDs recently, um, except that this is only available on DVD, not Blu-ray. But uh, this is Kevin Lavroni, the Maryland Muscle Machine video. Um, the, the guy who filmed this did a whole bunch of different um, bodybuilding um, contenders individually in their own videos and um, basically just to show their training um, the different splits that they do um, for their training and uh, also goes into their diet a little bit and just gets you a sense of their personality um, what makes this one kind of nostalgic for me is um, I actually knew him um, about around the time this was probably filmed in you know the the early 2000s um, it just so happened that I got a, my first real job uh, three doors down from the world gym where this is filmed and in training there and you know it's not a big gym um, but it's a serious gym or used to be um, I just ended up meeting him and got to know him and he was a really cool dude you know um, this video goes a lot into his his diet, which shows the masses of of uh, fish and vegetables and uh, some meat as well, other than fish. Um, and it's really interesting um, as well because he just lifts massive, <laughs> massive amounts of weight. Um, really amazing. And actually. There's one exercise in here that I've started doing just from watching this, and I really like it. It's for it's for uh, shoulders. Um, he would do shoulders in a Smith machine behind his neck, though, and I really like that. So anyway, moving on to the Blu-rays. <laughs> so yeah, I am pretty big fan of the Dexter series, uh, except <laughs> I kind of can take or leave some of the direction that the writing has gone in. Um, I liked the first season a lot, which I have on Blu-ray, and the third season I really enjoyed just because Jimmy Smith's is so fun to watch, um, you know, and Dexter's still reasonably in control of himself and his life uh, in this season <laughs> no matter how much the writers try to screw that up but um, but yeah so far the only two seasons I own first and third um, certainly not gonna buy the eighth probably not the seventh either <laughs> but uh, yeah this one's fun for repeat viewing Oh yeah. I must have watched The Breakfast Club about every single day uh, when I was in ninth grade. Um, that year I had a lot of time to myself and um, had this on VHS. <laughs> so I've seen this many times and this is the first time I've bought it on Blu-ray. Amazingly. Um, yeah. I actually haven't even watched this Blu-ray yet. It's still in the plastic. So, I better get busy and check it out. Scarface. Um, I basically just uh, replaced my DVD copy with this. Um, yeah. Being a huge fan of the Grand Theft Auto Vice City game, uh, which borrowed very heavily, um, was very influenced by this movie, Scarface. Um, yeah, it's fun stuff, you know, watching him come up and kind of get out of control. Um, but it's kind of amusing when you find out that most of this was not even filmed in Miami. 
and I hear that that was because the um, the community was not happy with the being portrayed this way. <laughs> Too bad. Good movie. R.I.P.D. Um, a lot of people, I think, were a little too critical of this movie. I, I think you shouldn't take it too seriously. I mean, it's not trying to be original. In fact, it's pretty much borrowing and nodding to and doing homages to lots of movies. I mean, obviously, Ghostbusters and uh, uh, Men in Black, but um, there's, I don't know, I could think of at least a dozen movies that uh, somebody must have watched and, and managed to work in there. So, really funny movie. I like it a lot, and the cast is really good. So, <laughs> particularly their alter egos are really fun <laughs> when they appear. It's pretty good. Good stuff. This is a movie I'm kind of obsessed with right now. I'm watching it pretty often. Uh, the Zero Theorem, which is by Terry Gilliam. Um, same director as uh, Brazil and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Um, I'm a huge fan of Christoph Waltz. He's unbelievably talented. Um, and when I saw this come out, I mean, everybody said it was weird and whatever, but I just really liked it. You know, to me, it's sort of a modern version of of uh, Brazil in a way and it touches on you know some of the the problems that we have in m more of today's society compared to when Brazil was made which was you know 20 or 20 odd years ago um, but it still has that strange you know Terry Gilliam style so I don't know plus this actually is somewhat sexy <laughs> um, Melanie Theory, she's pretty awesome. So yeah, good movie. I'm trying to remember if I've already shown you this or not. This is the German edition of Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. Um, it's the only version I could find on Blu-ray, but it works perfectly and uh, it has the full English um, soundtrack to it, you just have to choose the second audio track. Uh, the only problem is all the subtitles are in German. <laughs> so if you like to see the script on the bottom of your screen, unfortunately, you'll have to read German. But uh, but it looks and sounds perfect, and I love this movie. It's so good, just amazing. Here's a movie I've shown you before for on uh, DVD. Finally got the Blu-ray of it. Um, this is Time Rider. Um, and it has a lot of ASMR triggers for me. Um, just a lot of curiosity kind of scenes with, you know, somebody modern going back a hundred years <laughs> and not really realizing he's doing it, you know. So he can't figure out why these people are acting so strange and they have never seen anything like him before. So, um, But yeah, lots of really interesting scenes that, that uh, definitely bring on the pleasant tingles. The Good Shepherd. I've been waiting for this on Blu-ray a long time. Um, the only editions that I had seen on Amazon uh, were foreign editions and they were pretty expensive and they finally you know this version came out and was more reasonable <laughs> but uh, I like this a lot it's fun as a as a period film as well as kind of a you know spy movie so to speak but I don't know I'm a big fan of Matt Damon he does a lot of cool characters um, and De Niro is pretty fun when he comes and goes in this um, interesting character, yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of slow. It's kind of long, but it's just really interesting, you know, the period and the different secret society, so to speak. <laughs> a 
dirty pretty things. Um, my only gripe with this Blu-ray is that it doesn't have any subtitles, and um, I don't have too much of a problem with that, but sometimes when we watch movies uh, that have English accents a lot, um, my lady is, is, you know, always grateful when the subtitles are, are there just to make sure she, you know, follows, but um, not on this Blu-ray, unfortunately. But this is a wonderful movie. Again, really good cast of people that, some of whom you may have never heard of, but you've probably seen them in other movies, but it's just so good. Really, really good. Um, it's just got a little bit of a dark, dark kind of flavor to it, so to speak. Um, the storyline is, you know, deals with, with the part of London that you've probably never seen before. <laughs> 54. Um, I've been a fan of this movie a long time and I just, I've bought it on VHS, bought it on DVD, and now I have it on Blu-ray. Um, I find it a little weird though because the VHS version was sort of the theatrical release, I think. Um, which made a lot of the, um, I guess, the romantic interest between Selma Hayek and, um, you know, Ryan Felipe's character, um, made it a little more, you know, unresolved. And uh, in the full unrated whatever version, um, it's much more graphic and I almost thought the movie didn't necessarily need to go there, but I don't know. Either way is kind of cool, I guess, but it's awesome to see it on DVD and on Blu-ray. So yeah, it's a fun story. Some people who were actually there say that it's not quite as accurate as it could be, but whatever. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Um, Besides the fact that Bob Hoskins is in it, and I love him. He's so great. Um, this was really groundbreaking. Um, when this came out, they weren't doing a lot of mixing animation with live action. And uh, so this was kind of a first. And it was so cool, so well done, you know. Um, so yeah, and again, I like... Things like cartoons are best when there's some appeal uh, for children because, you know, they're, they're cartoon characters and they act silly um, and they're funny. But there's also a, a darkness along with the, you know, sappy, sweet parts <laughs> to balance it out for, uh, for adults and it makes it just a, a little bit scary at times. And it just, I like that so much. So, really enjoy that. But, great to have that on Blu-ray now. It looks fantastic. The cell. As you can see, this is still in the plastic. Sometimes it takes a while. You're so excited to buy a new Blu-ray. But getting around to actually watching it for the first time is another story. So there it is, still in plastic. But um, this is one of the better movies that I've seen Jennifer Lopez in. And it's such a trippy movie, really. Just all of the dream sequences are so colorful and so sometimes really dark and really evil, but sometimes not. And Vincent D'Onofrio's performance is amazing. I mean, this is the movie that really made me, you know, have to watch everything that he's in. Um, Vince Vaughn is also really good, kind of as the, I don't know, earnest detective, but um, yeah, so cool. I just really like that movie a lot. I think it's really underrated. I don't know if a lot of people have seen that, but 
Hey, they made a Blu-ray out of it, right? <laughs> Wild with Reese Witherspoon. Um, I mean, you could say this is kind of a, what they'd say, call it chick flick, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, as far as adult content, I mean, Reese Witherspoon's never shied away from roles that, you know, where she has to be nude or where she has to have kind of an edgy personality. Um, this takes that up another notch, I would say. <laughs> um, basically, she goes on this long trek along the uh, PCT, Pacific Coast Trail, Crest Trail. Um, takes her months, you know, and uh, during the journey, we see a lot of flashbacks, you know, the places she's going in her head um, while she's basically by herself walking for two months, or is it three? Um, really fascinating story, really touching, um, but yeah, it's just cool, and there's lots of really good scenery, she's funny, yeah. If you haven't seen this, go see it, but make sure you can tolerate R-rated movies. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop 2. Uh, what can I say? This is my favorite out of the, the series. I do like the first one, but there's something about the capers, I guess, in this second one. It makes it more interesting. Um, and I love Bridget Nielsen, and she's such a great, you know, bad guy <laughs> in this movie. Obviously, you know, there's a little bit of cheesiness to Beverly Hills Cop movies, but, you know, and even to some extent, you know, Eddie's, Eddie Murphy's uh, humor. But, I don't know, I love it anyway. <laughs> great movie. Halloween 3. Here's another movie that's, you know, a lot of people either love it or they hate it, uh, especially because it doesn't really have anything to do with the main Halloween theme, which is Michael Myers. This is just a complete departure from that, basically. Um, but it's taken as just its own thing, you know. I think it's one of the, well, it's my favorite out of all the Halloween movies, but, um, you know, it's just more creepy, and yet it's also got a lot of stuff that's funny. Um, really, really good music. Really good music, if you like John Carpenter's stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can just sit and listen to the soundtrack from this, you know. Virtuosity. This is kind of a quirky movie, um, especially Russell Crowe, because he's just so crazy. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's just got a style that I really like. You know, this was kind of the early time when virtual reality was starting to be a thing that people knew about. You know, um, so. And there's some other supporting characters in here that are really good as well. And uh, you got Louise Fletcher, William Forsyth. Is that how you say his name? I hope so. Um, yeah, people that I've seen in many other movies. You know, I always look forward to seeing how they take a smaller role and make it really interesting. Um, but yeah, just cool, stylish interesting views of Los Angeles as well, so. I think when I reviewed this on Amazon, people downvoted me because they didn't believe this was on Blu-ray, which is funny. Um, yeah, Escape from Alcatraz. Been waiting for this to come out on Blu-ray for a long time, and there it is. I love the, the tension of this story and just, you know, you get so excited and seeing him get closer and ever closer to being able to escape. 
So, but the views of San Francisco are really amazing. Um, and just, you know, for me, being a fan for so many years of this movie and finally having it on Blu-ray so I can see sort of what the film actually looked like, it's really, this is one of my favorite movies to have. And there is one scene in here, I think I may have mentioned in uh, the movies ASMR video that, yeah, there's a, a scene in Escape from Alcatraz that has some good ASMR. Needful Things. This is another one that I've I've had on VHS and uh, finally got on Blu-ray now. So um, a lot of people are saying that there's a much longer version of this. I guess um, the version I had on VHS is the same as this. Uh, so it just looks so much better, obviously. <laughs> But I like this story a lot, and Max von Sydow is amazing, um, as, as well as, you know, everyone else in here. But, um, yeah, it's a cool little town, you know, Stephen King story, and lots of delightful, you know, tension between everybody, mostly based on misunderstandings, um, and just, you know, people not getting along. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's kind of funny how, how he plays such an evil guy manipulating everyone, so. Mm. <laughs> I kind of have to laugh every time I look at the cover of this, but it's partially laughing and happiness. Uh, Revenge of the Ninja. Um, my dad and my brother and I were all pretty fascinated with the the ninja kind of mythology um, but this movie in particular um, was always my favorite um, partially because of the story it's just cool it starts off you know showing some scenes that happen in this beautiful uh, Japanese country house and garden um, and then it kind of becomes more of a story that happens in the city um, but the whole movie, more or less, was filmed in Salt Lake City, Utah, where I'm from. Um, so, and it shows buildings that don't exist anymore downtown as well. Um, so, for me, there's a certain amount of nostalgia when I watch this. But, you know, it's just, I couldn't believe they were releasing this on Blu-ray. So, yeah. I didn't pre-order it, but I sure got it as soon as I could. Lincoln Lawyer. I think I was kind of late to the party on this. We probably saw the previews before we really realized we should check this out. Previews on a, you know, like a DVD. Um, so it had already been out for a while. And it's just so cool. I love this story and Matthew McConaughey is just really slick as uh, as the lawyer that kind of has to <laughs> I don't know I guess overcome his conscience and cleverly figure things out in such a way that it you know resolves his sense of justice um, but yeah I mean in 2011 I guess it's not that old but I just felt like you know I should have seen it so much sooner when, uh, so yeah, as soon as I had the chance, I bought the Blu-ray. The Most Wanted Man. Um, obviously a little sad when you have some of the last movies that Philip Seymour Hoffman did. Uh, but yeah, this is a cool story. It's, again, you know, it's a spy movie that's pretty slow and somewhat long, but if you enjoy that, then this is definitely good. Um, you get a lot of scenery around, um, actually, you even get to see some of the Reeperbahn area of uh, Hamburg in Germany. Um, 
a little bit in Berlin as well, but mostly in Hamburg. And it has to do with, you know, counterterrorism and spying and s stuff like that. Um, Willem Dafoe is great as some kind of banker. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed the way that um, Philip Seymour Hoffman uses his voice to kind of, you know, portray this German spy, basically. Um, yeah, really cool really amazing. I saw this in the theater um, last year, I think. So, yeah, very good. Nightcrawler. Um, I put this right up there with heat as far as movies that show Los Angeles, especially LA at night. Um, just incredible shots, you know. Um, but also, Jake Gyllenhaal's character is just so delightfully creepy, you know. Um, he reminds me of Ted Bundy, if you ever see Ted Bundy interviews. You know, he's he just behaves weird. He doesn't react to things in a, an entirely human way, you know, because he's always just reading people and trying to manipulate things the way he wants it to go. Um, so yeah, obviously when he starts to film events for the news, you know, he sure doesn't let his conscience or any sense of crime scene integrity get in the way of a good shot. So yeah, it's a fun movie. I like this a lot. <laughs> Uh, here's another one that goes way back for me. I've seen this movie many, many times, but mostly on VHS. <laughs> because there was a point in time when I was, I don't know, probably in second or third year of college, and uh, I was watching this almost every day. <laughs> um, just because I love the, the setting, you know. Um, I have family in the southwest area, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer are just amazing in this. And so is everyone else, for that matter. And, um, having it on Blu-ray now it just looks awesome, you know? Sounds great. <laughs> Killer Joe. Um, yeah, unrated director's cut, that is the truth. <laughs> This is very unrated, but um, it's just a really cool story, and uh, a bunch of my favorite actors are in this. Um, and it's the same director as the original Exorcist, which is uh, William Friedkin. Um, yeah, it's just it's a really, really cool movie. I don't know. Can't tell you much more about it. You should just go see it, but... But yeah, do keep in mind that it is very, very filled with violence, nudity, and so forth. Language. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've hardly seen a more kick-ass female in a movie than uh, Emin Emily Blunt's <laughs> performance here. Um, obviously, Tom Cruise is hilarious because most of the time you see Tom Cruise playing pretty self-assured characters and action star and all that kind of thing. And seeing him play someone who's scared to death and completely not ready to go into battle. <laughs> um, that was pretty fun to watch and just to see him develop into, you know, basically a killing machine uh, with her help. And, um, yeah, you know, it's kind of like Cross saving Private Ryan with Groundhog Day. And, uh, you know, some of the repetition is what makes it funny because there's 
subtle changes, you know. So, but yeah, this this is great. It's just so awesome. I saw it in the theater, and I knew I had to buy it as soon as a, the Blu-ray came out. Fallen. This is another one that's still in the plastic. So how about some plastic sounds? Um, I know I keep saying, oh, this has a great cast, oh, these people are amazing, but, I mean, Denzel Washington and John Goodman are just fantastic in this movie. And the way that the, the, it's basically a sort of possession story and a crime story, but it's cool to watch the possession travel from one person's body to another, you know? but then do crimes in the same manner. <laughs> Presents somewhat of a problem for the detectives, wouldn't you think? <laughs> the evidence doesn't really match, so. But anyway, really cool story. I like this a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hellraiser and Hellraiser 2. We, uh definitely bought every single horror film we could think of this year on Blu-ray. <laughs> and certainly, you know, favorites of ours here. So I find that I can just enjoy, if I just watch Hellraiser 2, that's like watching both of them in a way, <laughs> because they repeat a lot of it anyway. Um, but the second one has all the cool stuff in the labyrinth and uh, just cool stuff with the psych ward and, you know, Lots of cool stuff, you know what I mean? Sinister. Talk about adding horror movies to my collection. I actually have Sinister 2 on my wish list right now. Um, we saw that in the theater and I really thought it was, it was cool but funny. You know, again, it's creepy, really creepy, but I was laughing a lot. <laughs> but in this first one, it's just mostly creepy. And, uh, it's just a cool idea, the concept, you know. Um, all the different films that he has to watch when he's by himself and, you know, has some crazy effects on his family. Um, yeah. Liked it. Liked it a lot. And we have one more for you. The Omen Collection. And, uh... I've so far seen two out of the four, this collection. So it folds out. So here you have Damien the Omen Part 2. Over here. Part 3, with a very young and menacing but handsome Sam Nell. <laughs> so far I've enjoyed this probably the most. There's the original Omen, right here. And the remake of the original. Very cool set. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, the only problem is the discs do tend to slide out if you're not careful. <laughs> but, uh, yep, yeah, there you have it. All right. Well, if you're still here, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little collection update. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have to point the camera over at the crazy pile of Blu-rays we now have in front of our entertainment center. So, um, yeah, maybe for another video. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.